Hi everyone, welcome back to the next video of this entire series where we are talking about SharePoint Online. In the last video, we learned how to use Microsoft Planner in SharePoint Online to create tasks and plans. We learned how to assign tasks to the users and how to keep a track of the progress of these tasks. In this particular video, we will learn how to integrate Power Automate with SharePoint to create workflows. We will talk about the type of workflows that we can create using Power Automate. We will create a workflow in SharePoint. We will talk about the background process of Power Automate workflows. And we will use automate feature of SharePoint Online to create automate rules. A workflow is basically a series of activities. Those are necessary to complete a particular task. For example, you can create a workflow like when you create an item within a list, the owner of the site should receive an email notification. Or whenever someone adds an item within a list or makes any changes within the items, an approval should be sent to the owner of the site. And when owner of the site will approve the modification, only then the changes will reflect within the list. You can also create a workflow to automatically assign a task to someone. There are multiple types of workflows available within SharePoint Online that you can use to create automated or manual workflows using Power Automate. And just for your information, Power Automate is not a part of SharePoint Online. Power Automate is a cloud-based service within Microsoft 365. We can use Power Automate to create workflows within SharePoint Online. And not only SharePoint, we can integrate Power Automate with OneDrive, Teams, Planner, or other type of applications within Microsoft 365. So within this IT site, which is a team site, we have a list with name contact list. And this particular list has a few items. And we want to create a workflow that if someone makes any changes within this list, or if someone adds a new item within this list, an email notification will be sent to the owner of this SharePoint site. To create a workflow for a list, make sure you are within the list. You can click on the name of your list, and within the list, click Integrate, Power Automate, and click Create a Flow. On the right, you will see a list of workflow templates that you can use to create a workflow within SharePoint Online. For example, you can create a flow like whenever a new item is added within the SharePoint site list, a notification will be sent. You can create approval workflows. You can create a workflow like whenever a new item is added within the SharePoint, a request approval is sent within the Microsoft Teams. And if you click show more, you can see a few more templates that you can use within SharePoint Online. And if you click see more templates, you will be redirected to Power Automate. Here we have all the templates that can be used to create different type of flows. We can integrate these flows within SharePoint Online, Teams, Planner, and so on. So let's go back to SharePoint site. So we are going to create this flow that says send a customized email when a new SharePoint list item is added. So when someone who has permission on this particular site will create a new item within this contact list, the owner of this site will receive the notification. So let's click on the flow and you will be redirected to Power Automate. So at the top, we can see the name of the flow that we are going to create. And this picture basically tells us that this flow will connect with SharePoint. Then it will find the user in Microsoft 365. And then it will send a notification to the user in Outlook. And if you scroll it down, it says this particular workflow will first connect with SharePoint online because we have the list created within the SharePoint site. 
then it will connect to Microsoft 365 to find the user to whom the notification will be sent and then it will connect to Outlook to send the email notification to a user. Now next to each service you can see a green tick that means the connection with each service is created but in case you see a sign in option instead of green tick click sign in type your username and password and once you are authenticated it will turn to a green tick so let's click create flow and our flow is ready under details you can see the name of the flow description of the flow the owner of the flow who has created this particular flow and you can see the status is on we can see the date of creation time of creation the last modified date and time and the type is automated in power automate we can create three type of flows automated that runs automatically when an event is occurred for example when we create an item the flow will run automatically and it will send a notification the other type of flow is instant that is triggered manually and then we have scheduled flow that can be scheduled for a particular date and time so our flow is created but let's understand what exactly happens in the background when we create a flow or what happens in the background when a flow runs if you click edit you will see the complete flow here so the first step in this workflow is when a new item is created in sharepoint if you click on this this will give you more details under site address you can see the complete url of the sharepoint site on which we are running this particular flow if you click this drop down arrow you will see the list of all the sharepoint sites in your tenant if you want to run this flow on a different site you can select this site from this list and under list name we can see the list name on which we are running this flow so our site name is it and the list in which we are running this flow is contact list and same we can see here it and the name of the list is contact list if you want to run this particular flow for a different list you can click on the drop down and you can select the other list within this particular site and if you want to run this flow for a different site you can click on this drop down select this site and accordingly you can select the list from here now same way click on the second step this step is to collect the user details from microsoft 365 you can see it has few attributes of the mailbox like given name and mail and similarly the third step is to send email it shows the email sample that will be sent to the owner's mailbox to the site owner's mailbox so it says hi given name which is the owner's name then this is the body of the email or the email notification it says a new item was added at this time this date by and this will say the user who will make the changes and then we see first name so what this first name means if we go back to our sharepoint site we can see this title field which is actually the first name of these users this is the first name last name contact number and so on so we have all these columns within this particular list so within the notification email the flow will show the value under this particular column and we will see this practically as well and things will be more clear so let's go back to our flow and if you want to add another column along with first name you can click on this icon and here type last name and select last name so now it will show like hi the owner of the mailbox or the site a new item was added at this date this time by this user 
and then it will show the first name and the last name of the item that will add within this particular list so let's save this flow click save let's go back to our flow and let's go back to the SharePoint site and let's create a new item within this list. Click add new item and let's add a new item here. Let's say Chris, last name is Smith, contact number. And then we have email address. and click save so the item is created now let's go to my mailbox because i'm the owner of this particular site and let's go to outlook.office.com and we can see we have received one email notification it says high concepts which is the name of the owner of this particular site a new item was added at this date this time by this user because the owner of this site made the change so we can see the same name here and then it says details chris smith so chris is the first name and smith is the last name same was configured within our flow so we have received the email notification but let's assume we want to know that whether the flow was successfully initiated or not to verify this we will go back to our flow in power automate and at the bottom you will see 28 day run history next to this click all runs and here you will see if the flow was initiated successfully or there was any error in our case the flow was succeeded and if you click on this flow you will see each level is ticked and you can even see the time taken at each level so this was an automated workflow that was initiated automatically as soon as we made changes within the list apart from power automate flows you can also use automate feature to create rules in sharepoint online automate rules and power automate are two different things power automate is used to create complex workflows and automate rules within sharepoint online are used to send notifications when someone makes any changes within the list for example you can create a rule that someone changes anything within a list someone will receive a notification or if someone deletes an item from the list a notification will be sent to the owner of this site so let's see how we can use automate feature in sharepoint online to create rules in this example we will use conditions within the rule to create the rule or to create an automate rule you will click automate rules and click create a rule from here you can create a rule that when someone changes any data within the list someone should receive a notification or when a new item is added a notification will be sent or when a new item is deleted from the list a notification will be triggered let's click the first rule data in a column changes and here you will choose a column that if someone makes any changes under this column this rule will trigger you will see a list of all the columns that you have within the list so let's say i want to create this rule for contact number and next to changes you have a condition let's say if someone changes the contact number column to anything or the contact number value to anything this rule will trigger or you can select other values as well for example two and here you will enter a value for example one two three four five 
So if someone will change contact number within the list to one, two, three, four, five, only then this particular rule will trigger. So like this, you can use conditions within this rule. Let's select to anything. And here you can type the name or the email address of the user to whom you want to send this notification. Let me add Bob Ross. And if you want, you can add another email address as well, or you can add more than one email address and click create. So the rule is created. This is enabled. That means this rule is running. And let's make some changes here. So let's say I want to change the contact number of Chris Smith. So let's add it. Let's modify this to let's say like this and click exit grid view and let's go to Bob Ross mailbox. So Bob Ross has received one email notification that says concepts user changed contact number to this for Chris. So like this, you can create automate rules within SharePoint online. Let's go back to SharePoint site and let me show you other rules. You can also create rules like when someone adds an item within the list or when someone deletes an item from the list, a notification should be triggered to someone. Within these two rules, you can't use conditions. These are very simple rules. Let's open this one. So here it says when a new item is created, send a notification to this user. We do not have any condition within this particular rule. And if you go to this particular rule that says an item is deleted, there is no condition as well. We can simply send a notification to a user when a particular item is deleted from a particular list. If you want to create complex rules or flows in SharePoint online, you need to use Power Automate. We will discuss some more Power Automate flows in the next video. So that is all for today. If you learned something new from this particular video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.